Good evening, everyone. Alongside Frank Hanrahan, I'm Kristen Bursett. Thanks for joining us for Game on Overtime. Despite a tough stretch of games, the Caps came into today's matchup just two points out of first place. Yeah, playing very well. In fact, going for a season high four wins in a row as Alexander Ovechkin and the Caps taking on the Flyers a matinee at Verizon Center on Sunday afternoon. To the highlights we go with the big C getting the smelling salts. <laughs> Wake up on an early start time as the Flyers and the Caps. And of course, there were some really fisticuffs. Matt Niskanen getting the better of Scott Lawton in that uh, first period fight. And there was some hockey to be played as well. Flyers working the puck to Michael Del Zotto. His shot gets deflected by Mark Street. One zip, Philadelphia. Capito would answer on the power play. Marcus Johansson fighting El Capitan. Alexander Ovechkin, who buries his league leading 33rd goal, tying the game at one apiece. As for Philadelphia, it won just six games this season with scoring three or less. Make that seven. Wayne Simmons scoring what would be the game winner as the Flyers skate on by the Caps, three to one. I think they had a little more jump they, uh, today. They uh, looked fresher than us. Uh, they, hadn't, they hadn't played in five days. So it was three and four, seven and 11 for us. Not an excuse. I didn't like our, our, our execution. We're in the hockey game even though we didn't play our best. We're in the hockey game at 40 minutes. Chance to close the team out, really stomp on them. It's disappointing not to, not to rise above and come over the win. Trimble's got 18 points. Four seconds. A three. Oh! <laughs> Mellow Trimble! That is special. Not only is that special, that's a young brother breaking ankles <laughs> right there. That young man did it all. 24 points. We talked about it already. Melo Trimble is the player of the day. That one, the buzzer beater at the end of the first half in Maryland, just never looking back, KB. He is the point guard, the freshman point guard, proving yeah. to be a huge asset to this Maryland team. He leads the team in scoring, leads the nation in free throws and attempts, and is the finalist top 25 for the John R. Wooden Award. Here's the best part. He's a local product, mm -hmm. Prince George's uh, County product that's uh, no doubt about that. Frank Hammerhan uh, sat down with Melo Trimble. He is the freshman who was powering the Terps engine. He's coming in again. Trimble for three. Here comes Trimble. Kick out. Trimble. Melo Trimble has been a huge part of the Terps success this season. He's averaging 15 points, three assists a game to help really reinvigorate Maryland basketball as the Terps are certainly headed back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in five long years. Let's go out to Xfinity Center now. Our Frank Hanrahan standing by with Hall of Famer, former Terps head coach Gary Williams, talking about this great game oh, yeah. and the incredible freshman. Frank? Mello Trimble, he was uh, making uh, the internet blow up with that pullback three-pointer. Special afternoon for not only Mello, but for this uh, Turpins team and the victory over Michigan State. Your thoughts? Oh, that's a great win. Uh, you beat a Tom Izzo team that easily. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. And, you know, you talk about Trimble, that, that move he makes when he steps back, just so everybody knows, you got to be really strong to do something like that. Uh, he, he, you know, everybody thinks he's a little guy. He's not a little guy. He's, he's very strong out there. He takes contact well. It doesn't knock him off his shot. And, you know, he's, he's the reason other guys could open shots. It was such an ugly game the first time these two teams met. And you actually told me before the game you expected a much better offensive output from the Terps, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I thought if Maryland could get the same looks, it was one of those games out at Michigan State where they, I thought they had some shots that they should have made. And that's not going to continue. You, you, you usually play up to your level somewhere along the line. And today the shots that, you know, Tribble made, especially in the first half. But, you know, all those guys, like, like a Lehman, like, like Smotris, they're capable of doing some things. And, you know, it just showed today. You know what also showed, Coach, was the fact that Mark Turgeon told me this week that this team really likes each other. And you could tell in the way that they, in, in tight positions here, they trusted each other. Nobody tried to play me basketball. They did it as a team, and that's why they won this game. Oh, they really do, and it really shows in the defensive end. Everybody helps each other out. Uh, if one guy gets beat, you have to go through another guy to get to the basket, and, you know, that's been a characteristic of this year's team. And, you know, any time you play defense like Maryland does this year, you have a chance, even if the shots that go in, like the first game against Michigan State, they still got it out to win because of their defense. I think Tom Izzo was trying to pull the plug on our live shot. Yeah. That's, that's right, what right. it is. We have the plug back in. <laughs> AC power has been restored at the Xfinity Center. Back out to Frank Hanrahan. Frank, right, what you got, go. man? 
All right, Coach Mark Turgeon uh, is here with us. And, Coach, now 17-2 and two and 5-1 and one in the Big Ten. you got to love where you are as a team right now. Yeah, I mean, it beats the alternative. So it, it's, it's nice to win. We're a third of the way through. Um, it, it, it's a grind, as Coach <laughs> knows. And um, you just go from one to the next. And, and, and like you said, uh, trying to keep these guys humble. I, I thought when we won at Michigan State, we didn't stay humble. And it showed um, in the way we played. And hopefully we've grown up and matured a little bit uh, since that game. And, and we'll, we'll enjoy this one, but mm-hmm. we'll come to you know, practice on Monday and get better. What I like is that your other wins before today, they were grinders. You really had to do things <laughs> yeah. tough the whole yeah. game to win those games. Today you came out, and I think you showed people, like when the ball's going in the basket, when, you're, when the offense is working, and your defense is still there, yeah. just what the potential of this team is. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited, Coach. I, I, um, I'm still adding offense. When you go through injuries, as you know, and Des gets hurt and Evan gets hurt, you really, you're afraid to add things. Mm-hmm. You, you, you just, our motion was good for us. So you, but now that we're getting healthy and Evan had his best game, his best half, you, you start to add some more offense. So we were able to show some things today that they haven't seen, and we mm-hmm. got some buckets out of that, and we'll continue to add offense. Um, but it always makes it look better when the shots are going through uh, the way we, the way they did today. But w- I think offensively we're just going to continue to grow. But like Coach said, we're not going to make shots every night, so we got to rely on our defense. Coach, thank you so much. All Congratulations. Right. The Terps get the big victory this afternoon. Let's send it back to you. All right, Frank, thanks so much. Pretty cool to see the former coach yeah. who built this program up talking to the current coach having mm. such success. No thanks to, to Coach Surgeon for joining us. And I'll tell you, this game is so special, they had to hold it on a special day, Saturday afternoon football in the NFL. I'll tell you, the Philadelphia Eagles need this, of course, at 9-5. and five. They're trying to keep pace with the Dallas Cowboys. Washington, and the hope here is if they can win today, they can unbruise the ego just a little bit. Unbruise the ego. Let's set the scene for you. Here's a look at uh, some of the players from both teams arriving and warming up. Robert Griffin III back in the saddle again today. He threw for 236 a week ago, but still struggled getting the ball out quick enough. Can he make strides today? Well, that's the goal. This position is very difficult, especially when you're learning new concepts with a new system. Uh, it takes time, so it's important for us to try to have some success on first and de- second down so we don't have to th- drop back and throw it 30 times a game. We got two games left, um, you know, and we got to make sure that uh, as a team we go out there ready to play because um, anytime you have a chance to go out there and play this game, um, we are playing at, the high, at a high level. These guys uh, in there are the best in the world, um, so we have to go out there and show it. Yeah, no doubt about that. Robert Griffin III will be the focus. Let's get you up to date on the inactives. And really, the story is, is who's going to be active. Trent Williams will be going today for the Washington Redskins. That offensive line desperately needing him. Trent Cole not going to go for the Eagles. Roy Hamu not going to play. We know Brandon Merriweather on IR. Of course, all that pales in comparison, gang, to our big story. Robert Griffin III will get an opportunity to deliver again. This uh, third season for him has not gone as planned. It started out with a lot of promise. It's been an unmitigated disaster, and you have to ask, how have we gotten to this point? The Maryland Terrapins go into the big house and come out with a big victory. It's the Terps' first win against the Wolverines in school history. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Game On. I, alongside Dave Owens, I'm Kristen Bursett. Maryland getting another taste of Big Ten territory today. I think they like that one. Yeah, KB, Maryland's trip to the big house, not as frightful as it once seemed. The Wolverines, they've fallen on hard times, let's face it. But a big win nonetheless. Maryland uh, 23, Michigan 16. Let's hear what our panel has to say about it, starting with the lady of the house, Christine Brennan of the USA Today. Christine? Well, I'll tell you guys, I think Maryland is more at ease in the Big Ten than some of the old Big Ten teams. Teams. Uh, beating Penn State this year, beating Iowa, and now going to Michigan, as you said, a, a undermanned, not a good Michigan team, but still winning at Michigan. What a first season this is in the Big Ten for Maryland. All I say is bravo to Maryland. You know I said earlier, I didn't believe in you, but then I said I'm on your bandwagon, <laughs> so I, I'm part of you. I'm part of you. I thought it was a great win. Uh, this is the year of uh, winning against teams that they hadn't won in 100 years. So, yeah. 
Well, I, I'm always uh, been a big supporter of Merle from afar, and I just think this is great for recruiting. Uh, I mean, when I was at Oklahoma State, Jimmy Johnson came in, we won seven and four, and we got a lot of players throughout the country. A guy named Dale Sheffield was an All-American here. They paid him a fortune, and then the next thing you know, he was uh, in the county jail. But over, <laughs> o- o- overall, so you saying they have good players yeah, here in this area? I, I, th- I think that this win that Maryland won today is going to be big for recruiting. <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree, and you know, to me, this you got to put your uh, hats off to Randy Etzel and his staff. Uh, what they did with C.J. Brown in particular, they, they took a running quarterback, wasn't doing very well, especially against Michigan State, and he was hampered, and they went all in on him. And he had, and he had a tremendous game. They come back and they win. A, a team that Brady Hoke is probably not going to be coaching next year. Nonetheless, now you now you got a bowl game that you could be in Tampa, you could be in San Francisco, you, you could be in a warm-weather city for your bowl. And the count is two balls and one strike. All on their feet, all around National Park. The 2-1 pitch. Line to left center field. Sousa moving over. Can he get there? He makes a diving catch! He makes a diving catch! He holds it down! It's a no-hitter! It's a no-hitter for George Zimmerman! Hmm. Charlie Slows, you got that right, brother. Great call by you. Great pitching by Jordan Zimmerman. Great defense by Steven Souza. And it makes for a great day. Welcome to Game On Overtime, everybody. Let's face it. Baseball can get overshadowed on a football Sunday, not today. The Washington Nationals reminding us that they have depth and an abundance of pitching. Let's get to it down at South Capitol. Jordan Zimmerman uh, came in with a a bruised shoulder after taking a baseball off the shoulder in Miami. Meanwhile, Miami starter Henderson Alvarez pitched a no-hitter last year on the last day of the season. Not this season. Ian Desmond putting a swing on it, his 24th, 1-0 Nats. Great season for Denard Spann in the third. Uh, I'll take an uh, audio daily double, please. Sets a franchise record for most hits in a season with 184. Back to Zim. Injured shoulder. Uh, Don't believe the hype. 10 Ks. No hitter through eight. He was uh, only supposed to pitch six. Ninth inning. Here we go. Two outs. Chris Yelich trying to break up the party. But look at Steven Souza. Wallapalooza. Steven Souza. Lays out to preserve the no-hitter and let the celebration begin. Oh, baby. First no-hitter in franchise history. The Nats win it 1-0. It was awesome. Um, you know, I was just all smiles. And, and you know, those guys have been playing great behind me all year. And, and uh, you know, to end it like this, it's, it's special. It's a special day. Uh, this doesn't happen very often. And uh, he was in command from the beginning. His pitch count was low, which helps. Um, and there was never a thought of taking him out uh, until he gave up a hit. Boy, here's some more impressive numbers on Jay Zim. It only took 104 pitches, two hours and one minute. Talk about peaking. He's won seven straight decisions, and by the time the game ended, all seven position players behind Zim were substitutes. Wow. All right, those are the great highlights. Uh, Let's take you back to Towson now, where Diane Roberts saw the game up close. Diane, a great, great victory for Maryland. Absolutely, Dave. It was kind of funny. I was watching from the press box. I was trying to tweet as we go along, but every time I would finish a tweet, they'd score again. It was a flurry of goals at the very beginning of the game. These girls were focused. They, all they wanted to do was win a national championship and win it for their seniors. They did that. They won a national championship, and they couldn't be happier. Amazing. You know, we wanted this so bad since the beginning of last, uh, the end of last year when we lost. And I'm so proud of our team for overcoming so much adversity and coming together and winning tonight. I'm so happy. It's amazing. It make me teary eyed here, but super proud. Proud of all of our alumni, all of the championships we won in the past. Proud of this group of amazing athletes that I have the chance to work with. It's so surreal. It's, I don't even know if it actually happened. Um, it's just so great to be able to go out this way. I mean, for all the seniors, we've wanted this for four years. and. It's so exciting. Okay, so senior Beth Glaros um, scored five goals, just five in her senior year. Taylor Cummings, Kristen Lamont, and Brooke Griffin all scored three. I have one of those ladies here with me. Brooke, a hat trick for four of you. I mean, could you even have imagined that that's how the national championship game was going to play out? No, I mean, from day one, I said our team is just, we're. Everyone can score on this field, and that's why we're so dangerous. There's not one player. You can try to face guard one player, and someone steps up. And it, this moment is so surreal, and I'm so proud of every single teammate, and we believe in every single one of those teammates. 
seriously, the very beginning of the game, it was goal, 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 goal. And I was sitting next to the, uh, the, the press guys from Syracuse, and they were a little concerned about, oh, it's going to be a long day. Is that how you wanted to play? Absolutely. I mean, we, we played them three times before, and we wanted to come out and just take it. We wanted, we wanted this so bad. We knew the feeling last year we played. This is the same thing as going in last year. We played this team three times in a row, and we did not want to lose. And we came out on fire, and it showed it five straight goals so fast. It was just... I don't think we know it hit us. We just like, how are we scoring? Like, it's so easy. We just were working together. It was just amazing. Of course, Syracuse, they would not go away. There was one time there where every time they scored a goal, you scored a goal, they scored a goal. I mean, they, they were a very worthy opponent. You mentioned playing them. Last year, you played them, you won in the semifinals. You played them in the regular season this year, and you won. In the ACC championship run, and you won. Did that help tonight? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know that we played them. We played them a lot in their ACCs, and they came to the ACC this year. We played them so much, and we know how strong and how physical they are. But we focused on the little things. We took care of those opportunities, and we just the draw was huge. I mean, we had possession, you were scoring, and so that was a huge part of the game. And our defense started our offense, and it's just oh, it's so amazing. You mentioned the ACC. This is the final ACC game for the Terrapins against an ACC opponent, yes. and you go out national champs. Could you have written a script any better than that? No, not at all. I mean, that feeling last year, I think that motivated us this year. And I said from day one, this is the, this is the team. I mean, we get along so well on and off the field. And I just, I believe in every single one of those teammates. Brooke, I owe you an apology. Right before we went on the air here, Brooke called me out on wearing my orange. Now, what's funny is I used to live in Syracuse as a child a long time ago. This was not on purpose. <laughs> okay. I try to be unbiased as a reporter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, congratulations Thank on you. a na Thank national you. championship. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Uh, Dave, I don't know what else to say. It was a magical <laughs> night here. A lot of people overuse that term, but it, it was really electric. A lot of fun, and we'll have more from Towson coming up later in the show. Back to you.